I think it's quite unlikely that legislation gets all the way to the president's desk and signed into law in this Congress. However, there's real important progress being made, right? The House Financial Services Committee has reported out a stablecoin bill, a market structure bill. Uh, they did it with a bipartisan vote. They had all the Republicans, a handful of Democrats. So there is some bipartisan support for this. And we desperately need this, right? In my view, we desperately need to have legislation that clearly defines how this space is going to be regulated, because in the absence of that legislation, what we see is an out of control SEC trying to assert jurisdiction even where it shouldn't and where it doesn't belong, uh, you know, uh, regulating by enforcement, which is a terrible way for a regulator to do its business. It's having a chilling effect on development in the United States and driving development overseas. And this is a terrible, terrible missed opportunity. And ultimately, it'll be a cost to us. So I'm, I'm very, very insistent. We need to have legislation that uh, allows, as I say, provides clear guardrails, allows this space to thrive. Um, even if it doesn't get signed into law in this Congress, I hope that legislation will pass on the House floor, which I think is actually reasonably likely. And that will be an important step forward. We'll still have a ways to go, but uh, that would be an important progress. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Supporting great content by hitting the cash out and by joining the Patreon. And we have Senator Toomey on regulation. And we know Gary Gensler is going to be in the House tomorrow. And we know his job was to kick the regulation can down the road. But nobody is going to be paying attention. We know how the NWO sets up the distractions. The master magicians. And we have the shutdown loaming. And also, guys, we have the strikes. And we know while the masses are distracted, the NWO builds. We have Money, Graham, and Stellar team up to bring that non-custodial wallet. So, of course, guys, you're not going to hold any big money in it, but money that you need to move and do cross-border payments, you know it's going to be a whole lot cheaper and a whole lot faster. And then we have Jamie Dimon, and we know he has been sounding the alarm, but we know all the stimulus and high rates for longer is destroying the global economy, not just in the United States. But the global economy, remember, we're in a fragmented world. And then also he talks about the AI takeover. And we know artificial intelligence is being embedded in everything. And that's including the medical field. And we know probably that's the biggest field where money is wasted. And then, guys, we have the strikes. And we know Biden and Obama back in 2008, 2009, and that's about 15 years ago. And we know the NWO hopes the people had forgotten. They hope that people are so distracted. But you know the crypto teacher brings you the truth. And that's the reason why Biden is acting like he's with the unions. He should have done an executive order to give those people's money back to them. Look at the CEO salaries. Guys, these salaries weren't like this back in the 80s. Dividends, buybacks, billions and billions of dollars they keep giving to their friends and family. But unfortunately, the masses are asleep. We don't come together in order to get to our goal. But remember, the NWO comes together in order to get to their agenda. You only need a few men to push billions. And remember the crypto teacher told you, by the time the sheep wake up, the machines would have taken over. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows, when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. GPT is 72% accurate in making medical decisions, including identifying possible diagnoses and final care decisions. Though some critics argue that artificial intelligence studies aren't grounded in real clinical needs. Joining us now, NYU Langone Professor of Medicine and Fox News contributor, Dr. Mark Siegel. Doctor, thank you for walking us through this report. I'm curious from your perspective how you're viewing the balance of risks with AI. Is it 
tilted more towards a good thing or are you looking at this and really looking and seeing a lot of the risks and the downside? Taylor, I actually like it. And I think overall the balance is in, the fa in favor of it. And I'll tell you why. By the way, this study is from the Journal of Internet Medical Research and they look at the Merck Manual and 36 scenarios from Merck and they look at it from beginning to end. What could this be? What is it? What do we do? What's the final diagnosis? And they're the more complicated it was, the less they, the less well Chat GPT did. It's somewhere between 60 and 72 percent. Here's why I like it, because I think it's a clinical tool. Right now, it's a research tool. It can help me with radiology, with cancer diagnosis. But in the doctor's office, especially if there's a scarcity of people for me to refer to specialists. Let's say I'm in a rural area and I can't get diabetes doctor on speed dial or an oncologist on speed dial. This may help provide more information with decision making. So I look at it as positive, but doctors have to remain in control of it. It is not to replace us. The CEO pay and stock buybacks are an issue. I have a feeling you're going to mention that. But at the same time, at the same time, the automakers are need to now. Thank you for bringing it up, the, Okay, if the UAW gives, if the Ford and, and GM and scientists give the UAW everything they ask for, that it will effectively yeah. be uneconomic for them to run a business. Of course. Of course. Oh, it's going to, it'll be a catastrophe, an economic catastrophe that people, new hires who are making 15 or $16 an hour are, are suddenly going to be able, you know, the, the Obama Biden administration in 2009, they said to the UAW, to the auto workers, if you will cut your wages, if you will, Get rid of the, all these benefits. Um, we will save the car companies. And the workers said, yes, of course. We want to save our jobs. We want to save Michigan, the Midwest. Yes. And they did that. And they, pro they were promised. They were promised by Obama and Biden that we will take care of you. You'll get this back once we lift these bankrupt companies off their butts. And, and get them to, you know, Obama became the de facto CEO of GM and Chrysler. And, um, and it was a moment where um, uh, things could have been turned around even better. But he gave the companies back yeah. to the shareholders. And, um, and, but the workers never got what they were promised back. So, they're, so they had the new, new hires cut their pay in half. Pensions, like up in smoke, uh, all this stuff that the, all these workers are asking for. They're not wanting Michael. more, more, more. They want, they want uh, to have back what they were promised if they were willing to sacrifice. So I want to just go back to COLA for one moment. The UAW workers gave up COLA in 2008 and 2009. And it was a Republican presidency at the time when the companies were going to go into bankruptcy. And the workers gave up their cost of living increase to help support the companies. They have not had a cost of living increase since 2008 and 2009. And in terms of real terms, they're making 10% less than they were then. They're just asking to have COLA returned. EVs, let me tell you something. And I've said this to my colleague. I have been in the auto industry when I was, I'm not old, but I'm seasoned. When I started in the auto industry in the 70s, small, the auto manufacturers didn't see, by the way, gasoline prices were very high back then in the 70s, higher than they are now. And they didn't see customer demand changing for smaller vehicles. Like it or not, we're going to new technology of the future. And we got to be ready for it. We cannot be unprepared. We lost to Japan for a decade. More than we are competing in a global marketplace, more than 50% of the sales in Europe last uh, at the end of last year were electric vehicles. So we got to be ready to compete. But Donald Trump says they'll be 100% built in China. I'm not going to have them made in China. We need a level playing field. They need to be built here by these companies and by good paying American jobs, by American workers. And that's what I'm working for. And we need to work together to get there. You know, I look at uh, Mr. Musk and what he pays his workers who can't afford to buy his cars because they cost so much. We need to build well, cars here that are affordable by the workers and they need to make enough money to be able to buy those cars and have a decent standard of living. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but 
clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks to see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video.
part one. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part two. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID 33. Part three. King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.